Okay, hi everyone. My name is Karen Ann Subin and I'll be moderating this session. Your presenter for today is Sarah McCarthy. We are very excited to bring you outreach from Husky Robotics. So before we begin the presentation, I'll introduce myself. I'm a sophomore and this is my second year of robotics. Really quickly, I'm just going to go over how this presentation is going to go. I've muted you all for now, but as the meeting goes on, you can think of questions and select the raise hand function located by clicking on participants. And once I've called on you, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. We strongly encourage you all to ask a question in the chat if that's more convenient so we can keep track of asked questions. Sarah or I may ask questions for you guys and you can all respond by either typing in the chat or using the symbols in the chat or using the reactions feature on the bottom bar. Please use the chat and reactions feature appropriately. I would also like to let you know that all these presentations are being recorded. Now that we got that out of the way, I would let Sarah introduce herself. All right, hi guys, I'm Sarah. Um, I am a senior and this is my fourth year in Husky Robotics. So I'm excited to talk to you guys about outreach. Uh, so just a quick overview of this presentation. Uh, what we're gonna talk about is opportunities for outreach, uh, what you should present at an outreach event, attracting new members specifically at outreach events, uh, what to bring to an event, and how to adapt your outreach during COVID. All right, so first we have outreach opportunities. Outreach really can be anything, anywhere. Anytime that you form a connection with someone who doesn't already know about your team, that's outreach. Your goal is to form connections in your community. So there's a wide variety of places you can go to do that. Um, First, community centers, specifically educational ones like libraries and museums, love hosting robotics teams. Husky Robotics has had great success with outreach through the Naperville Public Library and the DuPage Children's Museum. Your audience in these places will mostly be young people, so you can get them excited about what you're doing. And also, these places tend to have a wide network for advertising, which is also good. You can get your event out to a wide audience. Um, another great way to reach children and adults is to participate in your school or district STEM events. Um, if you're a school associated team, then that's great. Make sure that your team is available to give a presentation or a demo at any type of um, STEM night or open house that your school does. As with libraries and children's museums, your audience will contain a large number of kids, many of whom may be interested in joining your team. Another fantastic way to get involved with outreach events is to form a connection with some other types of FIRST teams, um, especially FTC or FRC. If these teams are more established than yours, they may have a much greater network of connections um, and they may have some established outreach events that they'll want to include your team on. Um, FIRST teams love to help each other out, so don't hesitate to reach out to anyone that you know. Um, you can feel free to contact Husky Robotics or any other robotics teams that you're familiar with. Um, and if you have the means for it, you can also host FLL scrimmages. That's a great way to do outreach in the form of connecting with other FLL teams. So you can invite other teams to bring their robots and their game tables, and um, you can run a, an event with practice matches for these teams to show off their robots. All right, so what you should present at Outreach. Um, first, videos are a super convenient tool for Outreach because they're very versatile. Um, you can make a single, well, uh, a high quality video of your team introducing yourselves and showing what you do, and that can be shown at nearly any Outreach event, which is great. Um, also, they can also be shared online, and then the video itself acts as outreach um, as people see it online. If it's possible for your team, a robot demo is um, an obvious component of an outreach event. You can talk all day about what you do, but what people really want is to see it. Even if you can't bring a game table and run your robot, um, you definitely should bring it because people will be really fascinated just by seeing your robot and its attachments. If you're doing an in-person event, it's also really helpful to have some kind of display table where people can see pictures of your team, projects you've built, um, robot attachments that you aren't using, and your contact information. This provides something else for people to look at instead of all crowding around your robot at once. 
This is also a great place to station some of your students so that they can talk to people as they look at the display table. Your display table will keep both students and your audience engaged for a longer time. And once again, the best thing you can do for outreach is be creative. Include anything that you can think of in your outreach presentations. If your team has built something that's really cool, show it off. Anything that you have that showcases the hard work of your team is a fantastic thing to incorporate in your outreach. So attracting new members at outreach events. You should gear your events towards your intended audience. If you're present as an FLL team, um, if you're presenting at a library, a school STEM event, and similar things, your audience will mostly be young people. Make sure that your presentations will be understandable and attractive to them. If the kids you're presenting to understand and enjoy your presentation, they'll want to contact you and get involved. Not all events need to be directed towards children, but consider your audience carefully when preparing, as many of your events probably will be. Now that you've got kids interested, they need to know how to join you. If you're looking for new members, emphasize that during your event. Make sure that your contact information is clearly displayed in your area and mention it during your presentation as well. Your contact information needs to be correct and easy to find so that people will be motivated to go and contact you in the future. And lastly, you need to be friendly. I'm sure that your students obviously are always kind and graciously professional anyways, but be sure especially that students are friendly and welcoming when talking to peers and younger children at outreach events. Regardless of how intrigued they are by your work, Students will not want to join your team if they perceive that it will be a bad environment. Okay, whenever you're able to return to in-person events, you should have a detailed packing list of items to bring at events. This list is by no means everything that you should bring, and don't sweat it if you can't bring all of these items either. This is just a general guideline. You can modify your events and your packing lists to the resources you have available, but generally what you should bring is your robot. You're a robotics team. Everyone wants to see a robot demo. Bring your robot as well as any cool attachments that you can showcase. Allow people to observe the robot up close if possible and encourage them to ask you and your students questions about what they see. Anywhere your robot goes, another charger should go with it. You definitely do not want to be in the middle of a demo or an event and having a great time and suddenly end up with a dead, useless robot. So make sure that you have a way to charge your robot at your event. If you can, you should bring your team's practice table to your events. This will give people context for what your robot does and what it was built for, as well as what your challenges and competitions look like. Bringing a practice table does require coordination though. You need to coordinate, you need to communicate with your event venue to make sure that there will be space with your table and you need to communicate with the people coming to your, with your team members coming to your event to make sure that someone has a vehicle that they can transport the table with. Determine whether your venue will be providing you with a folding table or if you'll be bringing one yourself or if your game board will be set up on the floor. I mean, those are all acceptable arrangements, but you need to make sure you know which one. Um, another thing, if you have any cool prototypes or final products from your team's projects, either current or past, bring those. Showing off another aspect of your team, aside from the actual robot, that people may not have expected to see will grab even more interest. Adults especially are often amazed by how much young robotic students have accomplished towards actual real-world goals, so show them off. And finally, Aside from family and friends of current members, outreach will be your biggest opportunity to attract some new members. Make sure that you give interested people a way to contact you. For Husky Robotics, we keep a box of business cards on our table at any outreach event that we attend. Business cards, flyers, or pamphlets with ways to get in contact with your team after the event are a great thing to have. So these items should contain your team's name and number as well as a logo if you have one. Um, they should include the first logo as well, and they should include whatever email or phone number that they that you want people to contact in order to get information about joining your team. And finally, we have um, outreach during COVID. So obviously, COVID will greatly impact the range of outreach events that you're able to organize as a team.
In-person events will probably not be possible, or at least will look very different from what you're used to. However, outreach is absolutely still possible. Online events will make up the majority of your outreach this season, most likely. There are lots of online opportunities available. Contact, you can contact the places where you would usually do outreach events, um, or the new places that I've suggested, like libraries and schools, and ask if they have any virtual STEM events coming up, or if they would like to host one for your team. They will probably be very enthusiastic about this, this suggestion. If you have the capacity, you can also host your own virtual event, um, which is also a great way to reach your audience. Both in your virtual events and independently, make use of your videos and other team media as much as you can. If you have pictures or videos of your robots from past years, you can incorporate those into your outreach presentations. That can happen both in person and online. Um, you also should, with the consent of your students and uh, their parents, you can use social media pages to advertise events and your team. You can post pictures and videos of students um, to show what they're really doing and keep people interested. Um, and you may also want to consider taking on a project like creating instructional videos for use by other teams. These can be posted to social media, YouTube, or a team website. And those videos then count as outreach themselves because you're helping FLL teams that you may never even meet. Most, most importantly throughout all of this, but especially during COVID, be creative with your outreach. None of it will look the same as last year, but there are still so many ways that you can form connections and involve students in the process as well. Students can think creatively and come up with potential outreach ideas. They are the best resource probably for ideas specific to your team. They, um, can, they can come up with connections that you may not know about, and they will come up with ideas that you probably won't have thought of. Um, so definitely have them involved in the process. It will keep students um, enthusiastic about outreach, and it will allow you to reach a much greater audience. So do we have any questions? You can unmute yourself at this time or you can put a message in the chat. What kind of outreaches did you have? Um, so I personally have not participated in FLL, but um, for Husky Robotics, we have a lot of outreach. We go to, I think I mentioned the Naperville Public Library and the DuPage Children's Museum. Um, we also have done outreach events at the Alive Center um, near Naperville North, and we visit our sponsors fairly often. Um, Thank Sarah, you for asking. Yeah. We also asked like how to find um, other local teams. Like talk more a little bit about that. Find other local teams. Okay, so um, well, one good way to do it is through people you personally know. So if in, if students on your FLL team have any older siblings that are on an FRC or an FTC team, then you can contact that team because you already know them. Um, and also events like this where first, where older first teams are looking to reach out to younger teams, that's also a great way because then they love when you contact them back and um, organize things with them. Also, I think that there's a, um, I think if you go onto the FLL website, I'm pretty sure that there's a registered list of like where teams are located. And even if, even if you just Google it, I'm sure you could find other teams in your area. Yes. Anything else? Okay, so I think that's it. If anyone has any other questions, feel free to ask them now. Um, or there's a general Q&A at the end of this session, so you can always ask your questions there. Okay, thank you all so much for coming. Thank you.
Have a great day. Thank session. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.